Hey everybody, I'm Patrick. Welcome back to Rocky Mountain Style. Today we're going to chat about four belts, uh, more specifically heritage style belts. I guess that's just a fancy term for a jean belt or not a dress belt, but uh, there you have it. So we're going to talk about a belt from Hank's Belts. We're going to talk about one from Flint and Tinder from Huckberry. We're going to talk about one from Thursday Boot Company. And then last but not least, one from Brave Star Selvage, the uh, very nice selvage jean company out of California. So uh, there's going to be a lot of specs and things given. Uh, so I've got my notes down here. So I'll be referencing them. Normally, I like to try to look at the camera as much as possible, but I would rather be able to give you accurate information rather than, uh, you know, have you see my beautiful face for a few more seconds. So with that said, let's hop into it. So uh, I'll be presenting a few specs. Then I'm going to go into what I think about the belts and then who each belt is for. Uh, first, a bit of talk about belts in general. Now, I understand you can go buy a $20 belt at JCPenney or wherever, and it'll last you a good long while. And up until recently, that's exactly what I've done. I had the same belt I bought in high school uh, up until my 30s and liked it very much. It actually developed a pretty sweet patina. I couldn't even tell you what brand it was because all the, the branding had worn off. But it finally got to the point where it was breaking down a little bit, and so I needed to replace it. So you can buy lots of different styles of belts. I think, in my opinion, these kind we're talking about, these heritage belts are the best kind to buy because generally we're not dressing up a ton and you can wear these belts with jeans, you can wear them with shorts, you can wear them you know, to hold your pants up if you need it, you can just wear them as a stylish thing. Uh, you can pick different types of leathers, mix and match. So it's kind of a fun accessory and uh, I never really thought about it too much until recently, but uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of them. So I'll probably, probably keep buying them in different colors just because I'm you know, sick in the head like uh, probably some of you guys are as well. So uh, anyways, uh, let's get into the belts. So the Hanks belt uh, made in the USA. I looked and tried to find exactly where made in the USA it is, but couldn't quite find it. Uh, Hanks is headquartered in New York, so a good chance they may be made in New York. Uh, the Flint and Tinder belt is made in Massachusetts, and the leather, since it's from Wicket and Craig, is tanned in Pennsylvania. The uh, Thursday belt could also couldn't find where this was made at. Most of their boots are made in, are made in Mexico. Some of their sneakers are made in Portugal, so there's a good bet that it's either Mexico or Portugal. And the belt that I have is one of Thursday's rugged and resilient leathers. So that, of course, is tanned at Lafarque Tannery in Mexico. My ring hit there. Uh, made at the Lafarque Tannery in Mexico. And then the Brave Star Selvage, uh, of course, made in Los Angeles, like all of their jeans and T-shirts and jackets. I have one that's uh, pretty cool. The leather, I asked, I sent an email to the company and said, hey, where's your leather tanned? And all they would give me is a tannery in Texas, but they would not give me the name. So if you feel like trying to do a little sleuth work, go right ahead. But yeah, leather from Texas. So three made in the USA belts, one uh, not made in the USA belt, which is the Thursday. Uh, so the leather for each belt, let's talk a little bit about that. So first for the Hanks belt. Uh, they use a crazy horse leather, which you can see crazy horse leather used for all sorts of different products across the, the industry, you know, from boots to belts to bags to wallets to things like that. Uh, what I found out, crazy horse is generally just a, an industry term. It's not really a specific type of leather, but um, here they use a, a full grain crazy horse leather, which is a chrome tan leather. So it's nice and pliable. Uh, and this particular type of leather is from an Australian water buffalo. It's nine ounces, and it is a single solid piece belt, which is true for three of the four belts. Uh, the next one, the Flint and Tinder, it's a full grain Wicket and Craig veg tanned bridal leather. Uh, it's very nice leather, and I'm expecting it to take on a pretty nice patina with time. Uh, right now, it's pretty plain, uh, you know, very monochromatic, not a lot of uh, differentiation in the leather. It's very smooth, but I'm expecting it'll probably pick up some good color just because it is that veg tanned bridal leather. Uh, the website lists it as 8 to 10 ounces. It feels about the same thickness as the uh, um, hanks that I just mentioned, so probably 9 ounces. And it's, of course, solid one piece as well. The Thursday belt, uh, full grain, chrome tan, because it is the Thursday rugged and resilient leather, which is chrome tan. Uh, it's a two-piece construction. So you've got the piece of 
rugged and resilient leather in mines in Canyon on top, and then it's backed with what they just call maroon leather. So, you know, take that for what you will. Not exactly sure if that's a great thing for durability, but uh, having that smoother leather on the inside does help it go in and out of the build rooms easier. So, you know, take that for what you will. And then of course the Brave Star, last but not least, full grain steer leather. And this one uh, that I have is in a fantastic oxblood color, huge fan of it. Um, I got from the company, it wasn't listed on the website, but I chatted with them, it's combo tan. So start out with, um, you know, the same type of veg tan properties, but then move over to chrome tanning uh, to finish the process off. So it doesn't quite take as long as veg tanning. So it's kind of like, um, maybe it's like blade. You have all their, all their strengths and none of their weaknesses. Is that how that goes? Yeah, no, but uh, anyways, it's also a solid one piece. So again, three of them are, are one piece construction and the Thursday is a two piece construction. Um, oh, actually I forgot to mention at the very beginning, I was going to introduce, or when I was introducing the belts, I was going to talk about the price. So let's just do that real quick. The Hanks belt, $70, the Flint and Tinder, $85, the Thursday boot company heritage leather belt, $80 and the Brave Star Selvage, uh, Oxblood leather belt, $58. So there you go. Hey, this is editing Patrick talking. When I was editing this video, I realized I completely forgot my section about sizing. So I threw together this graphic here showing which size of the belt I ordered. And the yellow circle, of course, indicates which uh, hole I wear the belt on. So my waist is about 34 and a half inches, give or take, which means generally speaking, I wear a size 33 or 34 pant, depending on uh, the specific company. You know, every once in a while, there'll be some crazy vanity sizing and I'll wear a 32, but generally speaking, 33 to 34. Uh, you can see I probably should have gotten the 36 in the Flint and Tinder, but I'm happy with the sizing on the rest of them. The Hanks belt was perfect at 36, uh, and the Brave Star and Thursday were just about perfect at 34. So there you have it, and back to the regularly scheduled video. Some of these belts feature uh, slightly different um, accoutrements than the others, so I'll mention just a couple of those real quick. So the Hanks belt and the Brave Star belt both use Chicago screws, simply meaning that uh, the things that look like rivets that hold the belt together where the buckle is are actually screws, not rivets. So you can unscrew them if you want to change out the buckle or if the buckle breaks, you can unscrew them to replace the buckle, something like that, uh, which is a, a pretty nice feature, I think. Uh, for the Hanks belt, it comes with a black buckle, but I changed mine out to a nickel because I'm not, not a huge fan of the matte black look on my metal. Um, it just doesn't seem to match anything as well. So I've already used that on the Hanks belt. Uh, for the Flint and Tender, it has a really smooth edge finish, which initially made me think it might be a two-piece construction because normally you have that smooth finished edge on a two-piece construction to sort of hold them together you know, or make it look like a one-piece. But, um, you know, they made that choice because they wanted the belt to be sort of a, a do-everything belt. You could wear it with jeans and rough and tumble, but you can also, it's, it's smooth enough and refined enough uh, that you could wear it with slacks, you know, in business casual settings. So nice feature there. The uh, Thursday, really, the only thing that I'd call a feature here is that they use the same leather as uh, all of their boots. So if you have a pair of Canyon Captains, you can get a Canyon belt. If you have a pair of uh, natural Chrome Excel Captains like I do, you can get a natural Chrome Excel belt, uh, which is kind of neat if you're you know, a matching freak. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. But other than that, uh, it's the only belt that is stitched rather than using screws or rivets. So again, maybe not the most uh, durable choice there. Although to be honest, I'm not really sure. I've had rivets pop off of jeans and things before, so maybe the stitching is I don't know, more durable than rivets. I'm not really sure. If you have any idea, uh, comment below and tell me which one you think would be more durable on a belt long term. Uh, yeah, so a few different features. All right, so this is getting a little longer than I wanted it to be already, so I'm just gonna give you some quick thoughts here. So the, the Hanks belt in general, um, I think it's a great deal. They have that 100 year warranty, which is interesting. Obviously that's just a marketing gimmick. No one's gonna keep a belt for a hundred years. And I was thinking, I was like, even if I passed it on to my son, you know, if it was a transferable warranty or something like that, you know, even he wouldn't live to the end of that. So, I mean, for something that's $70, just saying that it's made well is good enough for me. I mean, you don't really need a hundred year warranty, but you have one if that matters to you. Uh, the Flint and Tinder, I think, is the most versatile of all the belts because, like I mentioned before, 
you can wear it with jeans, shorts, or you could wear it with slacks and a, you know, a cotton button down Oxford, um, something like that in a business casual setting. And it would look just fine. Also, it's from a well-known tannery here in America, Wicket and Craig. So if you like your leather to be name brand, then this would be your only option of the four. It is the most expensive at $85. So keep that in mind. Uh, the Thursday. So this one is an interesting one because the whole point of getting one of these seems to be matching your boots or just picking a leather that you like, which is exactly why I got one, uh, the Canyon, like I did. I got it as a Christmas present from my wife and the Canyon leather is kind of a brownish grayish to me. So you can use it to match anything that's brown, gray, black. It, it, it's sort of a match anything belt, which I think is fantastic. With that said, at $80, um, you know, not having the made in the USA provenance like these others, uh, having, you know, decidedly maybe slightly lower features like a two-piece construction and stitching, I feel like the Thursday is probably a little bit overpriced. So, um, you know, there you have it. And then the uh, Brave Star Salvage uh, is the one that's blown me away. It's, it feels the beefiest to me. Um, given how they have different hardware and different lengths, I couldn't really weigh it to see, but it feels the thickest to me. It feels the beefiest to me. The leather feels the most substantial and it's the cheapest of the bunch, which I think is pretty cool. Um, on their website, they mention that they have an organic dyeing process for their belts. So I think there's also a good chance it will patina quite well, but that's just a guess. But uh, yeah, the Brave Star, uh, pretty cool belt, 58 bucks, really hard to beat in my opinion. And so who's going to buy each one of these belts? Uh, for the Hanks belt, really, I think you're going to buy this belt if you care about that warranty or you think it might be a good talking point, you know, a good conversation starter. And if you just want a good, solid all-arounder at a reasonable price, you know, 70 bucks. So uh, yeah, Hanks. Flint and Tinder, if you want just a single belt, you don't want to mess with any others, find, you know, a nice neutral color that you like that goes with a bunch of different things. Buy you one Flint and Tinder belt. You can wear it with jeans. You can wear it with slacks. You can go anything in between. So if, you know, the person to buy a Flint and Tinder belt will be that person looking for just a single belt and not having to worry about anything else. Uh, the Thursday belt, as I've mentioned before, uh, if you want to match your boots, that's pretty much the only reason to buy one. I guess you could have a fringe case if you don't want extra metal on your belt, uh, extra rivets. Like if you're thinking they might scratch something or you just want to have as little metal as possible, only, only the buckle, you can get that because it's stitched and doesn't have the extra metal rivets. So that's, that's a thing as well. And then the Brave Star. I think if you want the best deal, if you want the best um, value for money, I think that would be the Brave Star here. Um, it's styling is decidedly the most casual of all these belts. So I'd probably only wear it with jeans or, you know, casual shorts, things like that. But uh, if you're okay not wearing it with uh, your khakis into the office or your uh, slacks, you know, when you go out to dinner, you know, with your special someone, and if you're okay with that, then the Brave Star is the one that gets my pick here. Uh, they have uh, several different colors, including one that's just a completely raw belt, which will pick up, you know, any of the dirt or indigo ink from your jeans or anything that you can throw at it. So that's kind of a neat thing that you might be able to do as well. So uh, that was a lot of info. Um, I know I wasn't too eloquent, but uh, hopefully that helped you. And if you're in the market for a belt, uh, you can start to look for different features and think about some of the things that I've learned here about these four belts. So uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions. As always, I will read and reply to everything. So thanks a lot. Have a fantastic day.